getting comfortable with uh, the way things are going uh, or, or not, or if we're just too busy. What I wanted to do is I want to start out by giving a little bit of an update on what happened at the board meeting on Tuesday night, uh, share with you uh, lots of some good news, and then we'll have to go into the financial stability plan and uh, um, questions uh, and rumor control. I haven't heard any good rumors lately. You have something good, okay. So anyway, so from the board meeting, I just want to say a couple of things, and unfortunately she's not here, but one of the things we did at the board meeting was uh, pass a resolution uh, honoring Tina Lacoste for her 27 years of service. Uh, this is her last month. She's retiring from here, but she's going to get retirement pay and a new job uh, somewhere else. But we're going to miss her, and uh, it was a great event uh, to honor uh, Tina for her 27 years of service. A couple of things that got approved at the board meeting. One was a memorandum of understanding with the Santa Fe Public Schools. Many of you may have seen a story in the paper on Monday night about that. Uh, the public schools needed a service provider to provide their high school equivalency programs. Uh, their previous provider had decided not to accept the contract this year. We obviously have a rather large adult education high school equivalency ESL program. And so we have a memorandum of agreement for at least this one year that we're providing services uh, to them that they used to get provided uh, by another provider. So that was a good, good thing for the college. It's gonna, it really furthers our collaboration with the public schools. We're doing a lot with the public schools, a lot more dual credit. We're doing the early college high school on the south campus, which is just kind of getting kicked off this year. So I think you'll see a lot more things with uh, Santa Fe Public Schools. And then one of the things we also had to prove was an easement uh, for P&M because they need to put in what's known as an interrupter, which kind of goes between our 1.5 megawatt solar array and their systems and our systems. And so it's a device that's going to protect us all in case something was to go wrong or in case we needed to cut one of them off from the other. It actually allows us to pr protect ourselves from P&M should P&M also have a problem. To put that in, though, we have to do a power outage. And so right now our plan is we're going to do a power outage on Saturday, November the 8th. It's probably going to start around noon and may run until sometime late on Sunday, November the 9th. Uh, we talked about trying to do it later. PNM wasn't really interested in doing it later. But because systems are going to be half down um, and online courses will be affected because of the length of the power outage, we thought it was better to do it not at the end of the semester. We know a lot of our online students spend Thanksgiving weekend getting caught up on their classes that are going to end in another week or two. So we think that the November 9th, 8th and 9th uh, time frame is probably the best. So it means the campus is going to be closed starting at about 11.30 on Saturday, November the 8th. Any classes that are scheduled for that afternoon are either going to have to be canceled or moved somewhere off campus. So they're all power and all systems will be uh, off uh, on that date. I want to share with you some good news in case you didn't read it and all the uh, this week in, at SFCC and uh, other events, but uh, our Veterans Resource Center uh, sent an application in to the Military Times uh, to apply to be recognized as a top two-year career technical college uh, in being you know, the best place for veterans to go for programs. We knew on a Friday that we were going to be one of the ones that they named, but we were pleasantly surprised that on Monday morning of that week, we found out we were number one. And that's great news for us. And I asked Greg Scargill, who led the group that put the proposal together, he said he's been getting lots of phone calls from pr prospective students, but also from other schools. Like the school that came in number two is, I think it's Fayetteville Community College. It's just outside of Fort Bragg. So their numbers are much greater than ours in terms of veterans that they serve. And wanting to know, well, why did you guys get it when you didn't have all the numbers? And Greg said his comment back to them, because we're training people for the jobs of the future, not the jobs of last century. And I thought that was a great comment. <laughs> so the real focus for Greg was a lot of the programs in our sustainable technologies and trades uh, programs and healthcare. So I thought that was great. Uh, also on that same day, we had the uh, commanding officers and several of the crew members from the three namesake U.S. submarines and uh, here. It was a great event for them. I've gotten a number of emails uh, from the commanding officers. They had a great day, a great visit to, uh, to Santa Fe. Um, most of you know we, we uh, finished the remodeling of the new adjunct faculty offices. We had a great open house yesterday. If you haven't been over there to, to look at those new offices, 
uh, those really, they're really nice. And we've been able to provide a lot of the things that adjunct faculty asked for when we did the survey back last January. They wanted more computers to work with uh, on. They wanted some private meeting space to meet with students one-on-one. -on -one. So there's now three rooms that you can close the door. But there's also areas where they can sit down at a computer and work with the student. Then there's areas that's just for the adjunct faculty. And then there's also lockable storage. So adjunct faculty that want to leave and bring stuff in for the semester can leave things and not have to take them uh, out back and forth. So it's a really uh, great area. <clears throat> As you're all aware, we reinstituted Governance Council. We've switched our meeting date. We meet the second Thursday of every month. So our next meeting is on November, I think it's 13th or something. Uh, we meet on 3 to 5. Anybody is welcome. Uh, the only people who actually get to vote, though, are the, are the representatives from the various governance groups. And so right now, our biggest area of concern, we're working on a variety of policies that are moving through the various shared governance groups. There's several of them that we have to get updated this fall. They relate to legal requirements, to human resources uh, applications, and uh, they're things that if we don't get them done, we're going to be in trouble come uh, January uh, for the calendar year 2015. So most of those have gone through the process, and so you'll see some of those at Governance Council. <clears throat> I also want to congratulate Janelle Johnson. Uh, she was named, uh, given an award for meritorious, meritorious service by the American College Counseling Association. So uh, that was also written up, I think, in, in the, this week at SFCC. Um, the best news I have is that come November 10th, we will have a vice president of finance. So Nick Tayas, who I hope some of you went to the public forum that we had, I believe it was last Friday, uh, was offered the position and has accepted it. Uh, we're really excited about Nick having to join us. Uh, he's got a, a great deal of experience for somebody who's not that old. Uh, he's worked in the public sector. He's worked with bonds and finance and property taxes, and that's one of our issues. He's worked at the legislature. He's worked for various education committees. And, uh, I just felt really good about him as a person sitting down and meeting with him. So I think he's going to be a great fit, and we've needed somebody in that position uh, for a while. Uh, related to that, and some of you may have attended, uh, Mary D. Walters has been putting on a series of kind of financial trainings to help support the board, but get other people involved in having adequate background to review our budgets. And I know Marsh has been there. I think a few others of you have uh, Margaret's been there. Uh, we're trying to train more people to have a role in oversight, that when we put together a budget, when we make revenue assumptions, when we make uh, final decisions, that there are other people watching over, it, over us, and it's not just the finance VP or the president or the budget director making these recommendations without somebody double-checking and maybe even triple-checking that the assumptions that they're using are valid and then the board can rely on it even more. So uh, we think this will be a great way for more people to be involved in the oversight and financial uh, expenditures and revenues uh, of the college. And then if you haven't voted, you can go vote early now. I can't tell you how to vote, but think strongly about bonds B and C. Bond B is for libraries. We get about $54,000, if I remember correctly, uh, to add to our collections. So that includes computers, databases, as well as hard copy books. Uh, other libraries in Santa Fe are part of that bond, too. And then bond C is the bigger one, is for higher ed capital outlay. And we have $2 million uh, for Santa Fe Community College in there uh, for really infrastructure improvements that we need to do, roofs, mechanical systems, things that need to be uh, repaired and upgraded uh, because of their useful life is coming to an end. There's also money in there uh, for IAIA, uh, for some of the other schools in town and some of the schools in the area. Neither one of those cause taxes to go up. So if they pass, we get the money. The state sells the, bun, the bonds, uh, but your taxes don't go up. So. On bond B, um, taxes go up 65 cents per $100,000 okay. value. OK. So if you own property, it's a small, it's a cup of coffee. No, not even a cup of coffee. Depends how expensive your house is. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so 65 cents. But bond C taxes do not go up uh, to do that. So before, uh, before I get into talking about the, uh, 
financial stability plan and addressed any things uh, uh, on that. Uh, I got somebody else that maybe can uh, help us uh, think about where, where we got where we got to go. So let's see what happens here. <laughs> Okay, I think that's good enough. <laughs> so, our mantra is if we can make it through December, we're going to be okay, okay? And we're still on track to do that. November and early December are still very tight months for us, and uh, we've really got to watch our, our, our vendor payments, That's because we're going to make payroll. Payroll is our number one priority after we have to do student refunds, and periodically we have student refunds. So uh, we're going to make it. And we're going to make it through December. Uh, it's not going to be really easy end of November in the first week or so in December in terms of our other vendor partners because uh, we're not really going to pay many bills until December 15th. So uh, accounts payable is going to be really busy that week before we close for the holidays because we're going to catch up on a lot of bills uh, that week. But uh, I don't really have any further updates on the financial stability plan. Uh, everything is still moving along. Uh, I do need everybody to really not spend any money if they don't have to. If we really need something for an emergency for a class, uh, we are approving those types of situations. Uh, anything we can put on one of our purchasing cards, especially after November 16th, that's even better because then it doesn't come due until we have that cash at the end of December. So we're making it. So you got some questions related to that? They're all over the place now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we need to get 11 by 17 paper in the library? Yeah. Okay, we need to check on that one. With the library folks to make sure that, uh, that that happens. The printer is capable. Okay. Have we not had that size paper in there before? Do you know? Okay. Unfortunately, printing costs, copying costs are pretty big for us here at the college. And so any way we can control reduce copying and printing, not only does it help us with our uh, sustainability uh, efforts, but it lowers a lot of cost, because it costs a lot. Here's a comment. Uh, thank you to OIT for their hard work this semester. Yay. Chris just had passed that. Yeah. <laughs> Is it Chris's handwriting? Yes, that's what he said. <laughs> First of all, I don't know how we're going to be able to add more parking lots. We really want to increase more people to carpool, use public transportation, and ride bikes. Uh, but as we grow, we're going to have to look at that. And, and so that's not something we have planned right now. We are expanding the number of handicapped parking spaces over in front of the fitness center. Uh, we just built a new sidewalk, and there's a new curb cut. So we're going to expand at least four or five uh, handicap spaces, and we're going to make it permanent. We've always kind of done it during the tax help season, but we're going to make it permanent, and then there will probably be some additional ones uh, during the tax help season uh, this, this year around. But uh, uh, we are looking at other opportunities of where we can do that. We exceed what we're required to do for handicap parking, but we know we have a lot of people who use the fitness center uh, probably more than we have spaces for. Diane? Well, this would kind of go along with the rumor mill, but um, I had thought we were talking about putting parking in where the running track is. It's one of the options to be looked at, but no decisions have been made. There are no funds. Okay. Okay. So uh, that in the master plan, there have been various, various versions of it, and that was one thought, because then you could have parking on both sides of Fitness Center. Right. Mm -hmm. Marcia? What about it? Yeah. I mean, I never see any carpool. Well, what about the carpool parking lot? Uh, you know, I, it varies from day to day. 
the challenge with the carpool parking lot is, you know, a lot of our people don't really want to park around front because they go to the health sciences center or the fitness center. So we need to look at that over time. It hasn't been a priority I've looked at uh, lately. I know I, there's been a couple times we've had special events we actually used part of it. I don't even know if anybody, does anybody know how many people have actually signed up for the carpool parking lot? Security. Huh? Security. Security would know. I'll see if I can find that out. I've, I've never, that's something I haven't really have, uh, looked into. Yeah, I've seen a few more than that, but that's about the usual. Okay. Yeah. Parking is a is a, a topic because somebody else wrote in and with the same thing, more parking, especially for health and science. So we covered that. Somebody wrote, "I love this class." Which class? <laughs> <laughs> you all get A's. Okay. <laughs> um, extended library hours, um, weekends. So I believe we actually have cut back on the weekend library hours because we discovered there's only four or five people using it in the after hours. So part of our cost considerations this year uh, was to uh, lower the number of hours. I think we're closing an hour earlier than we used to. Uh, people just aren't using the library that much anymore. They're making use more of the electronic resources available through the library. And so, you know, if we ever saw that there was demand, we would try to do that. But as part of our cost-cutting savings, at least for this fall, we did, did cut it back, I believe it was one hour uh, on Saturday. Now, the campus is open, so if people are coming in and want to use the computers at the learning, uh, the carols that are around, or, or any of the open computer labs, they can still come in and access uh, everything from there. They just can't physically go into the library and use those, uh, access the books that are in there. This is 216, so where's 214 across the hall? 214, yeah. Yeah, are they the old kind of chalkboards? They, you, the person says we can't see it due to high gloss. Well, let's, say, let's pass that along to Henry and let uh, maintenance look at it because I don't know what that issue might be. Uh, separate uh, or separate uh, bookstore hours and coffee center hours. Oh, maybe the one. Uh, the company's different uh, hours for each one. So that the copy center would be open longer. So I'm not aware of the hours. Are they not the same hours? I mean, because if the bookstore is open, the coffee, copy center can't be open without the bookstore being right. open, right? Yeah. So I'm not aware of, are they not operating the same hours? I, 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 think, they they are. I think they are. Yeah. Sounds like they want them to do longer hours. Okay. Yeah. Copy Center. What, do you, anybody know what time they close? Do they close at 6 usually, the bookstore? 5.30? Okay. So if yeah. the Copy Center were open later, yeah. people could... I mean, one of the, this is one of the things I'd like feedback from everybody here on. One of the things I've always wanted to do at the college, I feel like because the bulk of our students, and it used to be more than half, but now it's not quite that, that many, come at night. And I've always thought we should have almost all of our offices open until 6 o'clock Monday through Thursday. And so that would mean working nine-hour days. And I think we could actually even consider closing earlier on Friday uh, so that people had their 40-hour weeks. So in my opinion, we really ought to keep everything from the cashier to the bookstore, the Welcome Advising Center, and even all the offices that support classes and, and especially the adjunct faculty open until after those 5.30 classes start. Uh, which, and there are some that start as late as six, but I've always thought we should be open, as a college, ought to be open eight to six Monday through Thursday and eight to four on Fridays, you know, if we wanted to save an hour uh, to do that. So I'd kind of be interested in hearing people's feedback on that. It doesn't have to be in here, but uh, anybody got any thoughts on that in here? I'm seeing some nodding heads. I mean, we kind of did that that one summer uh, when we when we did the, for we did the we did the long day the four tens and we're closed on Fridays. Can't really afford to close on Fridays anymore because it impacts students more than it does us, and it really didn't save us the money we thought it would. So it just seems like if we did that, uh, you know, there's, there's always exceptions. Some people because of childcare issues can't stay that late. Uh, we could always work with some people on their schedules, but uh, I would kind of like to think about that, uh, maybe even for for next academic year as something.
Right. That's not faculty because they're already here. <laughs> but it would be the bookstore, the cash. And you know, we do keep them open later during those peak times. But uh, Rebecca? Right. Yeah, it wouldn't be that everybody has to work nine to six, right? You can also look at, I mean, Welcome to Advisory Center has versions of the same thing. Right. right. So, and I think some people, depending on how busy it is on Fridays, yes, there's some. Well, this is one of the things I am going to talk around campus. I want to talk to all the various governance groups about it because I don't want to just mandate it. But it doesn't, it doesn't mean everybody has to work eight to six. It just means we've got to keep the offices open from eight to six, which could be staggered times to do that. Okay. Are there others? Uh, a couple of comments about the plastic bottle uh, reduction initiative. Mm -hmm. um, uh, wondering who is in charge of it and uh, wondering how that's going with uh, replacing products, um, replacing the plastic bottle products that are still being sold right. on campus. Like so there's a vending machine that's selling plastic bottles of sodas that maybe we could get aluminum cans instead of plastic bottles. Then in the bookstore, I don't know if the items that they're selling are possibly replaceable with uh, glass or cans, but I just I would like to know if somebody's looking into it. So I did talk to Leanne. So I know in the bookstore we've tried to replace everything we could with either aluminum cans or I think we even have boxed water. Uh, in there now for people. Uh, some of the other products only come in one, one uh, like I think it's the Odwalla juices, yeah. and some of those only come in the plastic. Uh, in the food service, I'm pretty sure we don't, don't sell much of anything unless it only comes that way. I haven't really gone around and looked at the vending machines because I don't use the vending machines uh, for yeah, one thing. Go to like where the cafeteria right. is and walk down the stairs, there's a bunch of vending machines, and there's a one plastic right. bottle machine, a uh, vending machine that I've seen. Right. And then in the other vending machines, there are a few products that are in plastic bottles, but I don't know if they can be replaced. Like there's a Gatorade bottle. I'm right. not sure if it comes in a can or not, but yeah, Gatorade doesn't come in a can. Them. And then also if we could put reusable bottles in the vending machines, then when the cafeteria is closed, people have an option to buy a reusable bottle somewhere else. Like the only place to buy a reusable bottle on campus. We'll have to check into that. I don't know if they will fit in those machines, but that's like, we'll check. Let's check into that one. Uh, we need to talk to, to Bazad about the vending machines. He's in charge of all the vending machines. And so we ought to put through to him a request that we want to quit selling anything in plastic bottles because we've made that commitment, unless it's just not available. And ask if there is a way. Unfortunately, the vending machines belong to the other company, not to us. So whether we could sell our, our bottles. Uh, I don't know, but maybe there is a special machine we could buy just for ourselves. That would be cool. So we should check. We'll check on that one. That's good. Yeah. In term, in terms, and I don't know if you were around, but we did do a marketing campaign for a while. Uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, slides that were on the uh, displays. I know I used to see it all the time when I was checking out in the food service area. I would see it there. So we've tried to increase awareness of students. I know I saw some of the pictures you sent of where the the bags were full. Where do we still have the recycle bins with the plastic bags on them? They're in the back behind the cafeteria right now. There's a uh, bin uh, pallet full of those. Uh, Things that hold the plastic bags, yeah. and um, hopefully in the next topic we'll talk. About okay. That. Well, because I was kind of surprised to see that, but then again, I see a lot of people bringing them in from their cars, so at least they're recycling them somehow. And so I sometimes I think a lot of the plastic bottles that are coming in may be coming from pre people bringing them to campus as opposed to buying them on campus. But we'll work on the uh, vending machine issue. Okay. Another part of that was uh, how are we doing with a pallet? So we haven't gotten started on that. We've been sidetracked for the last few months with trying to keep our doors open and paying our bills. And so what I really would love to see is I'd like to f have some group that would be willing to draft a policy. So so that'd be great. So if you guys could start with a policy, uh, we have a new policy. It's on Jack now. I think it's policy 1-1 that tells you how to write policies. Right. And so if you can put one together, but if you could start writing one, I would like to have a broad sustainability pro uh, policy that relates to both campus operations 
uh, and our educational programs and with some teeth to it and then some procedures to it. I'd love to get that through to the board. I just, we've had so many people focusing just on our financial situation uh, that we haven't gotten to that, but we would like to. Right. Well, I've talked to Henry. Let me, I'll just let you know in here. Henry and I have been talking about, I'm hoping that over, by next budget cycle, I'm, I'm hoping we can hire a full-time sustainability coordinator for the college who would probably report to Henry as the director of facilities, but who would work very closely uh, with me as the president. And because Henry and I meet every week and we at least once a month, I'd want that person to be there so that we can really focus more on doing more sustainable projects uh, on campus in our operations. We do a great deal already uh, in our educational programs and they could tie together. But I'm hoping that becomes a full-time position uh, next fiscal year, if at all possible. And we've come up with some concepts to do that uh, without having to add another position to our budget, by, but by moving some positions around potentially. So we are looking at that. Did that cover? Uh, the plastic bottle reduction, yeah. the sortable waste station. Sortable waste. I, I would just want to introduce you to an idea of <laughs> build up, uh, support from all the stakeholders on this waste station and get input on the design. So explain to everybody what, what you're talking about. Uh, basically, all the trash cans on campus are separate. You have the plastic and the aluminum cans is one, but then you have numerous other types of trash cans all over campus and they're not really defined. So they're taking in compostables and landfill and most of it just goes to the landfill. Right. And compostables are a resource that we should be trying to save and if you're Regarding sustainability, it's a better thing to do since uh, the school has already bought a baler and they're trying to sort things and they are taking all the recyclables and selling them. Composting is another really important aspect of sustainability. So what I'm trying to do is get all the trash cans um, in one section and ask for people to throw, you know, lumber cans in one section, plastic bottles in another section, compostables in one section, and uh, landfill and try to educate people on um, what different things are and why we're doing these things. And I'm trying to work with plant operations management because they're going to be the ones who are going to be collecting everything every day. So I want to make sure that the design is done correctly. And then also I'm trying to work with marketing in that um, the waste stations, water stations, and vending machines all are really good areas for an awareness campaign. So in the design, I'm trying to show how it works, but also incorporate the awareness campaign in it as well, and just have input from everybody and approval from everybody as far as right. the design. Well, you're working with the right people about working with Henry and Emmanuel and others on that. I, I'd be very interested in trying, at least in the, maybe by the East Wing Eatery and, and by the food service area, uh, having a place where you put green waste, the compostable waste. I've seen a lot of colleges that do a good job about, with that, but you gotta, somebody has to have the responsibility of removing it periodically to start smelling. So you've got to be on top of that. But I think those are great ideas, and, and uh, uh, I'll work with you and Henry on some of those. Okay. So that, you know, that next year when things are better, hopefully you can build lunch of them. Okay. Sounds good to me. All right. Any other questions? That's all we have. All right. That's all the written questions. Any other questions in here today? I mean, we're, we are winding. I know it just, this is the ninth week or tenth week of the semester. Ninth. ninth. But it feels like we're winding down already. I don't know why. Well, the parking lot was actually not quite full today. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, uh, you know, holidays will be coming up soon. So, you know, we do get the two days off at Christmas, uh, at Thanksgiving, and then the two weeks off at Christmas. So uh, uh, it's coming up uh, soon. Remind everybody, the next board meeting is on November the 18th. Uh, from 3 to 5 that day, we're going to be having a joint meeting. Every year we have a joint meeting between the foundation board and the governing board. So it's going to be a long day for some of us. Uh, we're going to meet from 3 to 5 in a joint meeting. Then at 5.30, we're going to have the Higher Learning Center 
which is the HEC board, and then at 6 o'clock, or a little after, we'll start the regular governing board member meeting on the 18th. If you haven't been by, uh, the Higher Education Center is uh, all closed in. It's got, you know, color code on the outside. It's got the signs up. Uh, most of the parking lot is paved. They're going to be doing the last of it. Uh, the solar arrays have gone up on the roof and over the parking lot, I believe, because they finished the, uh, they were about to finish the canopies over the parking area. And uh, it's looking great. We went over there and did a tour recently. Uh, it's it's going to be an incredible space. It's, it's an incredible location. So we're excited. Uh, that's going to open. The grand opening is going to be on January 14th, I think, at 1 o'clock. Is that right, Janet? 1 o'clock. And then that's a Thursday. It's a Wednesday. And then classes will start there the very next week. So it's going to start there the same as our class schedule, which we start the spring semester on Tuesday, January 20th, because Monday is Martin Luther King holiday. Uh, one of our partners, Highlands, starts their classes a week early, but we're going to have them start over here uh, just in case we're not quite ready uh, over there. So they're going to have to start here and then uh, move over there uh, the next week. So uh, we're excited. Excited about that. It's going to be a, a great new addition, and uh, we're working on some signage along the road that we're trying to get permission from the state to put up, and they've promised to let us know here in the next week or so, right? Okay, so to do that. So, any, any other general questions or comments? They don't always have to be written down, Matt. Um, can I please give this to you for executive committee? Yep. Oh, thank you. Yep, yep, yep. Put it up and put it on the, in fact, give it to Barb, and she'll put it on the uh, agenda. For, for next week to talk about. Okay? All right. Mark, is there any other good news that I haven't shared that we need to share? Who won the pumpkin carving contest? Oh, yes. <laughs> Margaret Peters won the pumpkin carving contest. So, so Jovan had the best, I thought, idea with, uh, with the... Uh, uh, the logo. You came. You came in second, right? You came in second. So, in third, in third was uh, oh, Michelle. Yeah, with the ears, the big ears. That was fun. It was a great day. It was fun out there to have the kids from the International Elementary School and Wise Fools with the Dragon. I, I had to leave before all the entertainment happened, but uh, it was a fun event. And it was a beautiful day yesterday. So that that was great. And it was a good photo in the journal, so yes. Yes, one of the board members commented about a fun day, but too bad Margaret beat me. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, so I won't tell you which board member sent the email uh, uh, to do that. Uh, and don't forget, so next week we'll be having our, our community Halloween event on Thursday afternoon from 3 to 6. There'll be lots of people on campus. Uh, there's an opening in the Visual Arts Gallery of... I know it's Benitez, is it Francisco, Francisco. Uh, Benitez, uh, that's going to be at 5 o'clock, so there'll be a lot happening on campus on next Thursday, uh, October 30th, yeah, yeah, Maria Benitez's son. So. There's a story in Casa tomorrow. And to, oh, is it going to be the front page too, we think? We think maybe? All right, we'll see. Keep our fingers crossed. All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Oh.